Let's now talk about the segmentation memory model. In the segmentation memory model, memory is accessed by a segment and an offset. Due to the nature of the segmentation memory model, programs can be loaded in different areas of memory but run without any problems. Multiple segments are available through the use of segment registers. Let's now explain a little more about what I've just described here. In real mode or the 8086 Intel processor, you have what's known as segment registers. So we have the code segment, the stack segment, the data segment, and the extra segment. These are the only segment registers you need to concern yourself with. We use segment registers as a way to help us access memory in RAM. With the use of a segment register and an offset, we can calculate an absolute position in RAM where a particular piece of data is. You do this by taking the segment register, such as the data segment, the extra segment, and so on, and then you multiply it by 16. You then add the offset. This is the absolute position in RAM that a particular byte is at. Through the combination of the segment register and our offset, we get an absolute position. It's this combination that allows us to address up to one megabyte of RAM in real mode, even though registers can only hold 65,535. Let's do a little example. Let's pretend our code segment is at 0x7c0. And our assembly program's origin is zero. If you remember in the Hello World tutorial, we went org 0x7c00, right? Let's pretend we now set it to zero. This will mean that when your assembly program is assembled, it will offset all of the labels by zero rather than 0x7c00, as it was shown in the Hello World tutorial. So let's assume we have one instruction in our program, right? This very first instruction is at origin zero, so our offset is zero. So to calculate the absolute position of the first instruction in our program, we do 0x7c0 multiplied by 16, that gives us 0x7c00, and then we plus our instructions offset, which is zero, which gives us an absolute offset of 0x7c00. That is where our first instruction is. So there are many different ways to make up an absolute address whilst using the segmentation memory model. For example, to make the address 0x7cff, we could do it in a number of ways. Our segment could be 0 and our offset could be 0x7cff. That's one way. Our segment could be 0x7c0 and our offset could be ff. That's another way. Our segment could be 0x7cf and our offset could be 0x0f. There are so many different combinations of addressing memory. Let's now do a calculation for segment 0x7cf and offset 0x0f. So we do 0x7cf multiplied by 16, which gives us 0x7cf0, and then we add on the 0x0f, which gives us 0x7cff. Different instructions in the assembly instruction set use different register combinations. For example, the LOD SB instruction uses our data segment as our segment register and the SI register as our offset register. Let's take our example program here. Our origin is zero. So our assembler will treat labels as offsetting from zero. We move 0x7c0 into the AX register. We then move the AX register into the data segment register. Our data segment has now been changed to 0x7c0. We then move the address 0x1f into our SI register. Now in real life, this would be a label in your assembly program pointing to a message, something like that, right? As we did in the Hello World example program. We then call LOD SB. So let's now see what happens. The processor takes our data segment value, which is 0x7c0, and multiplies it by 16 to give us 0x7c00. We then add on the SI register, 
which is 0x1f. Lod SB now knows that the byte that it needs to read is at address 0x7c1f. This is what it looks like in the manual. Programs can be loaded in different areas of memory but run without problems. So I want you to imagine that we have two programs loaded into memory. Both were assembled with the origin being 0. Program 1 uses segment 0x7c0 for all its segment registers. So that's the data segment, the extra segment, stack segment, everything. Program 1 is loaded at address 0x7c00. Hence the reason why our segment is 0x7c0. Program 2 uses segment 0x7d0 for all of its segment registers. Can you guess what address is loaded at? You got it, 0x7d00. We can swap our segment registers when switching to the other process. We restore all the registers of the process we are switching to. This then leads our program to resume as if we never switched process at all. Multiple segments are available through the use of segment registers. Take this assembly instruction for example, move byte AL ES32. So this is our extra segment. So the, the absolute offset in RAM that it will get one byte of data from will be the extra segment multiplied by 16 plus decimal 32. We can do the same for the data segment or the stack segment. Let's now describe the stack segment. Imagine we set the stack segment to 0. We now set our stack pointer to 0x7c00. Before continuing, note that the stack pointer points to a place in memory and when we do stack operations, it acts on the address that we provided. The address that we provide is based on the stack segment and the stack pointer. The absolute address is calculated by the stack segment multiplied by 16 plus the stack pointer. Let's now continue so I can explain this further. Let's imagine we run the instruction push 0x FFFF. So this will obviously push some data to the stack. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware in your Win Windows 32 programs or your Linux programs when you've written assembler, you have bound to use the stack at one point, right? So what happens here is it decrements the stack pointer by 2. Our stack pointer then becomes 0x7bfe because with the combination of the stack segment and the stack pointer, our stack pointer is 0x7c00, right? When we push, it becomes 0x7bfe, okay? We then set the bytes 0x7bfe and 0x7bff to 0xff because we push a word here, right? There's four f's here, right? That are pushed onto those two bytes. So yeah, it's important you understand that that's how the stack works. And obviously when we pop, it does the opposite, right? So yeah, I hope that briefly explains the stack. We're not going to explain the stack too much because you should already know this being an assembly programmer. However, I did want to show you the stack segment and the stack pointer because you might not be as familiar with those things. So yeah, that is how it works in real mode. And obviously, because we're in 16-bit mode, that's why we're working with 16-bit numbers, two bytes at a time, you know? In a 32-bit system, our push would push four bytes to the stack. Because we're in a 16-bit system, only two bytes are pushed. 